CommitToWealth.com. Creating a legacy by committing to real estate wealth. Welcome back to another episode of the Commit to Wealth podcast. I'm your host, Juan Vargas. Uh, with us today, we have Pat Hyben. Pat is a co-founder of GoBundance. He's the host of the GoBundance podcast and the Real Estate Rockstars podcast. He has been a number one ranked agent in the world for both Remax and Killer Williams. He's the co-author of Tribe of Millionaires and the New York Times bestseller, Six Steps to Seven Figures. Pat, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. This is going to be fun. Hey, I appreciate you taking the time and making this happen. So, Pat, you know, I know a little bit about you, um, you know, for my audience that does not really know too much about you, um, you know, tell them who you are, you know, tell them your background and, you know, how it all started. Yeah. Um, well, you know, you know, when people ask me this on a plane or just at random, you know, I always think to myself, damn, I don't really have that much time um, <laughs> to explain <laughs> because they're going to, all it's going to do is ask, all it's going to do is force them to ask more questions. So I just say, you know, I'm a real estate guy. And, and what I mean by I'm a real estate guy is that, you know, from 21 years old on, I was a real estate agent. From 21 to 47, um, I was a real estate agent, let's say, full-time, uh, you know, in the trenches. And then throughout that time, I invested as well uh, in real estate, in residential, and then uh, played the game like they taught us in Monopoly, where you trade in your little greenhouses and buy big red hotels and um, went on to multifamily uh, and uh, have a shopping center and uh, then went on to a little bit more private equity and uh, uh, angel investing and things like that. And now my job is basically I have this room full of furniture, i.e. about 50 different um, little entities um, and I, I just move that furniture around the room all the damn time. You know what I mean? Like I'll sell this and buy this. I'll yeah. refinance mm -hmm. this and buy this or, or, or whatever. And, um, and that's kind of my whole life. And, that, and of course, GoBundance, uh, which is a labor of love, a company that I uh, started with um, two other big, uh, big time horizontal income investors, uh, Tim Rode and David Osborne. And now we have over... 200 members in GoBundance and that, that's my life. Wow. Yeah. So it's it been a lot of things going on. So, you know, what was that, that moment that kind of, you know, um, I guess your aha moment, you know, to, to change your life, you know, um, you know, we don't all start off, you know, kind of where we're at or end up, you know, where we're at, but, you know, tell us, you know, how, how things change for you, you know, whenever you're young, you know, you said you started at 21. Yeah. How, how do things change for you? You know what? I, that's a great a freaking question, and and I have an answer for it. I was um, I was in college between my junior and senior year, and I went to a beach town, Ocean City, Maryland, to work for the summer and just hang out. And um, I had a job working at a deli slicing meats, and uh, I was paid hourly. And I made $140 a week hourly. And a dude I knew from college was like, hey, man, I got this gig. I walk up and down the boardwalk, which is like an area where all the people go hang out with arcades and shit. And he goes, I walk up and down the boardwalk and I convince people to go on these uh, tours of timeshares. And I get, you know, a commission every time I, I convince somebody. I said, mm -hmm. well, I can I could do that. So I went out there and um, I, uh, for one day I went out and just tried to get people to go on, take these tours of these timeshares. You know, you give them like a free dinner at this restaurant if they go take the tour. So the mm -hmm. next, the next day I, I go to the sales meeting and they have everybody listed up on the board by number. So like my number was 101. I remember this distinctly. And then all the other guys were like 57, 94, 32. And they have all the numbers listed and then how many sales they got, how many people they got to go to see this time sale presentation. And th this kid, he was like the all-American boy. He was like the number one um, dude. His name was Danny. He was the number one seller all freaking summer. He's there with his boys. And, and I'm behind him. He doesn't know me from Adam. And he goes, who the hell is 101? 
<laughs> and I was one one and I had six sales in one day and, and he had like four. He was all hell bent in shape because he didn't, he had never seen one one on the board before. And I, I just said, Oh damn, that's me. And, um, <laughs> and, and they paid us, tw they paid us $20 each person. So I got, um, six times 20, got $120. But then if you got the most, you got a $50 bonus, right? Mm. So I made 170 bucks in a day where my other job slicing meats trading time for money I made 140 in a week so that was like the day like i literally did not even go back to the deli like i didn't even <laughs> i didn't give two weeks wow. notice mm -hmm. nothing and i i showed up at the end of the summer to pick up my check and the guy reamed me out for you know uh, how could you just show up two months later da -da 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 -da. but literally i was like this, this to me makes absolutely no, uh, you know, all the sense in the world. I make 170 bucks in a day versus 140 in a week. I'm never going to take a salary job ever again in my life. And I never have um, really and never, you know, I was always uh, in some sort of sales, mostly real estate sales or some sort of entrepreneurial activity ever since that day. Wow. So th that was a good, good little lesson there for you to, um, you know, to figure it out. And you knew that you were going to be good at this, you know, once you were, were making those numbers work and um, you never went back to a regular, you know, trade your time for money type of job. You know, that, that's, that's pretty impressive, you know, which leads me to, to another question, you know, and, and one of the things that you talk about a lot is um, horizontal versus, you know, vertical income, you know, and, you know, I just talked about how you were trading, you know, time for, for money you know, at your, at the deli. So, you know, kind of talk about what that means, you know, horizontal versus vertical and, and why, you know, people should focus on one versus the other. Yeah. Well, um, you know, my buddy David Osborne has always said that vertical in, uh, horizontal income is worth 10 times as much as uh, vertical income. And what he means by that is like, if, if you make a thousand dollars in horizontal income, meaning coming sideways, Mm -hmm. versus a vertically going up. Meaning if you, if you work in sales and you sell one more house this year than last year, you're going up vertically. If you get a raise of 5% this year, you're going up vertically. If you buy another house or a business or get something that pays you dividends, that is all horizontal. And he said, so if you make $1,000 uh, uh, horizontally, it's equivalent of like making 10000 vertically because vertically goes away right? It's temporary. Um, horizontal lasts forever. And so, um, you know, I've created close to 50 uh, lines of horizontal income that pay me sideways, that basically pay my personal bills so that I don't have to trade time for money. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's pretty impressive. You know, and I would say it's, it's pretty hard for most of the people to kind of, you know, wrap their minds around this, you know, what, what is a horizontal income? And, you know, because most of the people out there, I would say, you know, uh, myself included when, you know, a couple of years back, you know, we were trading time for money. You know, and that's, you know, a form of vertical income that you just mentioned, you know, so it's, it's hard for a lot of people to kind of wrap their minds around, you know, maybe creating different streams of income. You know, you said you had 50. Um, you know, that's, that's very impressive. So what would, you, what would you say is your percentage of real estate um, out of those 50 uh, streams of income that you have? It's probably about 70% right now. It's about 70% uh, real estate. It's, it's, it's heavily in real estate. Less than 5% in the stock market um, and then another 25% in, in private companies and deals. I've got like six... Uh, deals in the cannabis space now with, uh, you know, dispensaries and um, products and things like that. And I've got um, a couple other uh, small companies that of, of various nature that I've invested in and, and put my put my faith in. Right, right. So out of those, you know, 70 ish percent of real estate, you know, what would you say is your I mean, what does that real estate consist of, you know, specifically? So I got 12 houses in Maryland. Um, four of them are in uh, University of Maryland College Park, rented to college students. Um, the rest are in Baltimore City. Uh, the majority of those are, are Section 8. They're, they're detached single families um, rented to, you know, families of six or five um, through the Section 8 programs. Um, and then um, 
and then the 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 apartments I believe are at five. And the reason I say I believe because you know they were high as like nine, and and we've been selling lately. We've been on a selling spree. We've sold. I think three in the past 12 months all have just, you know, two X or more in, in, in profits because the market is, is high right now for multifamily. Um, and then I have a, um, a shopping center. Um, and I think that covers it. That pretty much covers the real estate. I have two houses that I live in. I have one house in, um, Folly Beach, South Carolina, that's paid off that I, you know, that's my primary residence. And then I have a house in Columbia, Maryland, where I grew up that I go, um, they come to on the summer cause it gets so hot in South Carolina. So, you know, those are, those are kind of additional, but they don't generate income. So your houses, uh, let's, let's kind of, you know, cover those real quick. Uh, the, your houses, you mentioned that you have some that were section eight. Um, you know, what does that mean exactly? You know, for the, for Marty, that Oh, sorry. Know? Um, so government, so it's like, um, poor, poor, lower income housing. So, uh, let's say you're a single mom and you have four kids and you have a job and you make 25,000. If, if you would probably qualify for section eight, um, and what section eight does is they will, pay most of your rent or a portion of your rent anywhere from like on mine, mine are anywhere from like 70% to a hundred percent paid by Baltimore city. Um, and then the tenant pays any difference, uh, if there is a difference. And, um, generally they section eight will pay somewhere between 20 and 25% above market. So like I could, uh, you know, some of these would rent for say 14, 1500 bucks to a family, um, that, you know, isn't on section eight, I can get close to 2000, uh, with section eight. Um, so it, it's a pretty good deal. And it also, you know, it's guaranteed income, essentially, you know, they just wire the money in, into your account. You never have to chase it, you know, like, Hey, your rent is late, whatever it's coming from government funds. Um, and uh, and the same thing with the with the college rentals too. I always go for anything that's going to pay above market. Like the college rentals, the comps are dorms, right? The comps aren't a house down the street that a family of three lives in, and the guys uh, and the, you know an engineer and the wife's a nurse. I mean, the the comps are kids living in dormitories, and the, the college always charges high prices for kids to live in dormitories, and and dormitories are small. They cramp. They got to share a bedroom or have a bunk bed. You know what I mean? So they generally suck. And so we can then take a, a bedroom and say, you get your own bedroom and you can get your own house if you want to party in it or do whatever the hell you want. No one's watching you. Um, and we'll give it to you for the same price as that cramped dorm room. And in the, and generally you get a, a much higher rent than you would, uh, you know, a family. Interesting. Okay. So going back to your apartments, you know, so you said that you were selling um, or that you were selling some, you know, which markets were those in and, and why, why was it selling? You know, is it be just because everything is pretty heated right now and you felt that it was a good opportunity to, to get out of those markets or get out of those specific properties or what was your reasoning on that? Yeah. Well, the comps just kept going up. And so basically like we had one, we paid two, 2.1 million for and put like 500,000 into it and sold it for eight, you know, and over a six year period. Um, and, 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 you know, if you could put something on the market and get, um, you know, and get bids for two or three or four times what you paid, uh, within the same decade, um, I, I think you're a dumbass for not selling. So we, 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 we've sold, you know, our, our game plan all along is to, is to sell after five years and unless, unless it's just an absolute rock star and a cash cow and, and, uh, it makes more sense to just hold on to the cash flow. But even if that's the case, we refinance and take our original equity out, um, so that we're just playing with the house's money at that point. Uh, which we've done on most of them. But yeah, some of these has just been ridiculous. Like, you know, people have come to us and say, hey, we'll pay $5 million for that um, thing that you bought four years ago for two and a half. And we're like, uh, yes, we'll do that. So, you know, it's just, it just I, I think you always need to be open-minded to selling and, and moving your furniture. Right, right. 
which, you know, kind of go back to the refi, you know, on those specific properties, you know, if you had that much of, of equity or potential equity, then why not just, you know, hold on to the properties and then, and just sell, you know, maybe take 70% of, of, uh, of the cash, you know, and, um, you know, is it because you were still going to leave some equity in the deal and you didn't want to do that? You wanted to just move, move the furniture, like you said? Yeah, we wanted to lock it in. You know what I mean? Because if you, if, if you say yes, um, you've locked in that high price. It's just like selling a stock that's high because, you know, most likely, I mean, you're going to, nobody knows where the market's going to go, but, you know, um, it's, it's really hard on some of these to see how, how in the heck they're going to add any more value to it because that's our job is to add value and we've added all the value we've added fences and security cameras and and you know playgrounds and and just made it a mac daddy uh you know apartment complex so how someone's going to buy it and make it better than we already have it doesn't make logical sense to us now in their mind they're like yeah i'm going to make i'm going to add value to this and they're telling their investors that they're going to add value to it and and I hope that they can add value to it, but it's just not our place to say. And 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 it's not like we are hoarding the cash, anyways. You know, I'm we sell it, pay taxes, and then reinvest. And a lot of people are afraid to do that. And they, you know, um, but I'm I'm from a different philosophy. I, I hate paying taxes, but at the same time, I'm not afraid to because I've seen stuff go down, man. I've seen I've seen stuff that I've had that I've held that has been worth a lot more. And, um, you know, five years later, it's worth a lot less. And I'm like, damn, I should have sold. So on that same topic, you know, if, if you're selling it at, you know, at the top, then you most likely you're going to be buying at the top as well. You know, so you're going to be, you know, moving your money around. True. You know, are, are you changing different markets or, or what is your, your, your strategy you know, from that viewpoint? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So I'm a little more, very I'm much more conservative, you know, um, the deals now, and this is a great question, are more development deals than than they are like value add deals. Um, starting with zero, because you know there's more room for um, for growth that way. Um, distressed asset deals, um, and and also betting on the come. You know, betting on the. That's why I started investing in cannabis because you know, in some of these companies, because you're betting on the come, you're betting on the future, um, and at the same time, you know, being a little more conservative. You know what I said? Like I said, my primary residence paid off, um, and um, and I did it. I did uh, open up an account with uh, Euro Pacific Capital, which is kind of like a hedge against the United States government um, and the United States economy, which is a hedge. Basically, he's investing in other countries and gold and silver and commodities like that that people tend okay. to flock to in, in troubled times. So it's kind of like a recession bet. Um, and uh, I did put a bunch of cash in there. So I'm, I'm, I am doing other things that are contrary to, hey, man, the, the real estate market's going to keep flying for another uh, decade. Yeah. So which other ways are you being conservative? You know, you mentioned, you know, a couple of different uh, right now, but like, you know, specifically when it comes to, uh, you know, different uh, investment opportunities in, in, in real estate, you know, how are you being uh, conservative these days? Because, you know, who knows, you know, I mean, we could be 70, 80, 90%, maybe a hundred percent at the peak, you know? So, you know, what are you doing to, you know, not only make money, but also, you know, at the same time, you know, watch your, your downside and be conservative. That's a great question. Okay. So the last two deals I did, um, one, I, you know, one I just committed to a couple of days ago, it's, it's a development deal where it's a vacant lot in Philadelphia and uh, it's going to be built across the street from a hospital and it's going to be like, you know, 50 apartments and the one company, I forget the name of the company, but they're like a WeWork type of company is going to, is going to, where Airbnb corporate company is going to like rent the whole thing for one price every month. And then they're going to rent it nightly, like a hotel, um, to people staying at the hospital, right? Staying with, with, with guests, you know, of patients at the hospital, like mothers and fathers and kids of, of patients at the hospital. Um, and um, 
and that the zoning on that is like hospitality zoning. So it's zoned, it's protected from, you know, any of these changes in Airbnb laws and stuff like that. Um, and I just think it's a, it's, a, it's a much more solid deal because number one, it's across the street from the hospital and you're not going after your standard person that wants a vacation um, or, or, or hotel person. So that's one deal um, that I like that I just committed to. And then the other one I just did was a church in Baltimore that is a, um, it, it was rehab, but the guy has rehabbed it again. And it's a, it's a church. It's an old church and he turned it into like a WeWorks. So he, he's added all these parking spaces and he's charging people parking fees. And then he's, and you can rent a desk inside of this church for anywhere from $50 a month to like $350 a month. Um, depending on whether you're going to, how often you're there or whatever. And uh, it works just like WeWorks or any of those places where you, you have a virtual office. And that I, I really like that business model. I think it's the future of, of office space. So, you know, these are, these are more things that are kind of betting on, in my mind, uh, not your traditional tenant. Now, I, and, and also, too, the two of the guys are both GoBundance brothers. That's a huge benefit of GoBundance is, you know, we're a massive deal factory where everybody's doing deals and syndicating deals and, and, um, and, and, and there's options there. Like I, I would say 10 years ago, I didn't really have many options at all. You know, now I got 100 options for every one that I decide to go with. So um, I, I think I'm just at a, at, at a, a critical stage in, in life age-wise and also with my network at GoBundance that, um, that I can pick and choose. Um, and, and, uh, I don't, I think a lot of people can't pick and choose, you know what I mean? They don't know that many people or have that much option. So you got to believe somebody that you don't know. Both of these guys, both of these last two investments, I know them, I know their families, I've met their wives, you know, I've seen their track record. I, I so I, you know, I trust them. I like that you mentioned, you know, that you have, you're, you're involved in GoBundance and we'll, we'll get into that a little bit um, in just a couple of minutes, but you know, that you're involved in GoBundance and you're able to see different opportunities uh, that are, that are, you know, presented to you and you're able to pick and choose, you know, and, and you're right. You know, not everybody has the, that, that luxury of being able to pick and choose um, and, you know, choose the ones that they want that, that work best for them. So, you know, in, in that group, you know, specifically GoBundance, you know, tell us, you know, what is about, you know, what the GoBundance group is about, who is it for, you know, what do you guys do? It's sort of a mastermind, right? Or it is a mastermind, but you know, tell yeah. us more information. So it's a men's only mastermind uh, of businessmen who basically um, talk about uh, how to make more money, how to have horizontal income, how to have better health, how to have better relationships, how to, you, you know, give back to the community, like things that we, we really should be talking about are, are brought top of mind. And, um, and then we do epic shit in the meantime, meaning we have two events a year and, and what we do is we'll ski, snowmobile, play broom ball, play ultimate frisbee, um, stuff like that, water ski, um, wakeboard, whatever the case may be during the day organized together. And then, uh, and then at night we mastermind. So from like four to midnight, we'll mastermind. We bring in speakers, Robert Kiyosaki, Robert Herjavec from Shark Tank, uh, Cameron Harold, Aubrey Marcus, you know, just any tons of people we brought in, we have them as speakers. Um, and then, um, then we mastermind on, uh, how we can grow and how we can become better. And then, and then on top of that, we keep each other accountable. Like we follow up, we have different go pods, which are about five, five go bros in each pod. And then, you know, you follow up, Hey, you know, you said you're going to stop eating carbs. You know, did you eat any carbs a day? You know, just keeping you accountable to whatever goals you, you committed to. And, uh, and then in addition to those two main events, we have about four others, um, that are pretty epic that are voluntary. They can be like, we're getting ready to go to Patagonia. Um, and then, uh, we went to Japan last year. We went, um, 
uh, we have a couple's trip where where the members and their wives are are going to Cuba um, in March, um, and 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 so we're always planning like neat stuff. Nice, nice. So you know, without making this like a like a pitch fest, you know, or, or you know, yeah, no, uh, I'm sorry, yeah. So, no, 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 no. Um, no, I'm gonna ask right now. Uh, you know, to my audience, without making it more of a, a sales. Uh, you know, what is the the cost? You know, and how can someone be involved? You know, if they wanted to find out a little bit more information about it. You know, what what's kind of like the cost? You know, for um for and you know who, who's your typical person that that joins? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, it, it's basically seven grand a year. Um, we have something called a champions. Uh, uh, a division, which is if your net worth is over $5 million, um, you can join a, an, an elite group called the champions and, and that's 12 grand a year. But, uh, the majority of the members are in the, in the f- seven grand a year. And in order to get in there, you do have to be a millionaire. Um, and, uh, uh the easiest way to find out more about it is to, uh, simply, uh, you know, just get the free book, uh, that we just created called Tribe of Millionaires, um, mm-hmm. which is uh, tribeofmillionaires.com, and it's free. And uh, I mean, you go on Amazon and get it for 20 bucks, uh, and we've sold, you know, like 400 copies on Amazon for 20 bucks. But if you want it free, I'll, I'll give your listeners the, the way to get it. It's just go to tribeofmillionaires.com. All you got to do is pay the shipping. It's like seven bucks. Um, and, th- and that book kind of is a it's a fable that is surrounded by um, nonfiction of our members, meaning the guy that helped us write it went to Japan with us as a writer, and we had 27 members in Japan, and uh, he interviewed them all, and then he wrote this book, and um, it's, it's only been out a week, and it's done extremely well, um, and, uh, and, and, and get a copy, read it. And then in there, it'll, it'll give, it'll tell you a little bit more about GoBundance at the end. There's also, uh, if you want to just cut to the chase, you can just go to GoBundance.com, um, and check it out. And we just, uh, started a women's division, which is a women's only division, which is at GoBundanceWomen.com. And, uh, we have 42, uh, women in that tribe already. Wow. So it's goabundancewoman.com. Yeah. You know, and I think a lot of these are, are more, you know, catered toward the guys, you know, and, and I think it's very important for, to also have something like, you know, towards the, the woman as well. And this is for women only. Uh, for the guys, it's the goabundance.com. That's the guys only. And then goabundancewoman.com is for the woman only. Got it. Okay. Good, good deal. Good deal. So, you know, it is time for our Nuggets of Wealth, uh, Pat. So we'll go ahead and uh, get that going. Uh, these are questions that I ask every guest every week, um, and hopefully they're able to help them out. Uh, what is a good tool, source, or platform that you use almost daily that you can recommend to others? Yeah, I love this because, you know, uh, um, I don't like email, and, and I'm finding less and less people like email. I just went to Switzerland for two weeks. I just shut my email off and just sent a message. It was like, I'm off email. If you're in my inside, you know, if you're, if you're an insider in one of my business, you can get me on Slack. So I would say Slack. I also use GroupMe, um, uh, which is another messaging thing. And then when we do our trips, we use Boxer. Um, and, and I, I you know, I was talking to another guy about his podcast, getting on his show, and he has a autoresponder on his email that says, I don't check emails, you know, <laughs> uh, leave me a message on Voxer. And I guess he just is on Voxer all day long, and he doesn't, uh, you know, do emails. I don't know how he gets documents and shit like that, but, um, <laughs> he, you so, know, but anyways, it's interesting. So, so, yeah, that is pretty interesting. So, so Voxer is, it's, it's kind of like you're, you're leaving a voice message, right? That's what it is essentially, right? You're leaving a voice uh, message to, to the, the person um, and it's not anything written, you know, like, like as um, it would be in, through email. So that's very interesting. You know, I've it's, heard a of one, it. it's a one-way conversation. So like I would leave you a message and you can decide whether you want to respond or not, right? So you, there's not a lot of wasted time. There's no wasted time. Like, hey, how you doing? Da, 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 da. It's like, what is your question? I'll give you the answer, you know? Yeah, got it. <clears throat> so Slack, GroupMe, and Voxer are the three recommended tools that uh, you would recommend to the audience. Good, good. Um, what was your best, the best business advice you ever received? Yeah. Um, you get rich slow. You get know? rich. 
Get rich slow. Yeah. I mean, like so many people, especially nowadays, more than ever, everybody wants to get rich fast. They want to go to, they want to create, come up with an idea and just go to Shark Tank, you know, and then 90% of the people coming on Shark Tank have no revenue coming in, right? They just have an idea and they want $10 million for it. So, you know, uh, some, I, a mentor of mine told me this a long time ago. He said, you get rich slow. He's, he, he's like, you do it one, you know, it's what you buy one house. You know, and a guy, I, I, I have people tell me all the time, oh, you know, in my market, I can't afford a house or the numbers don't work. I'm like, well, drive an hour and a half, you know, buy a house out, you know, buy something for 50 grand or something as far, you know, even if you have to drive two hours and rent it out, get your head kicked in. And then the next year, do it again. And the next year, do it again. <laughs> and you just kind of, you know what I mean? You get rich yeah. slow. It's not an, it's not an all or nothing type of deal. Right. No, I really like that advice because, you know, I think there's a lot of people that, that, you know, they look over um, at their neighbors, right? And and so someone that, you know, there maybe is a peer um, or maybe somebody that they look up to, but, you know, uh, somebody that, that's that's doing maybe better than, than that person is. And so they, they, they get this sense of feeling of, hey, I'm, I'm not doing as good. I'm a failure or something, right? So everybody is in their own uh, different, you know, uh, page you know, maybe you're in the same chapter, but you're in a different page, you know? And so I always like to tell people to pretty much, you know, stay in your lane. Right. So, um, you know, I always like to go back to like the Olympics or whatever. Um, um, I can't remember his name right now, but, uh, who's the Olympic swimmer? Um, yeah. Um, Michael Phelps, Michael Phelps. So he was, he was uh, swimming against the, the guy from, uh, South Africa and the other guy, you know, the, the other guy, he's a powerful swimmer. Um, but he kept looking over to, uh, to Michael, right? And even like during the, like one of the final laps, you know, Michael was going and he was so focused, 100% focused, like straight ahead. He was straight ahead. And then you look over and there's a picture. If you look it up on the internet, there's a picture where, where the other guy from South Africa, he was, he was going and he was just, uh, you know, a hair behind him, but he was looking over uh, to Michael Phelps. I guess who ended up winning that, that uh, you know, that, that, uh, that race, you know. That yeah, swim. by like, a, like literally less than a second. Yes. Yes. It was like a millisecond, right? So yeah. it's like the it's like if he hadn't even made that look, he probably would have tied or won it. Yes, you're 100 percent right. And so, you know, it's okay if somebody is doing better than you right now. It's okay. You know, maybe you will never do better than than they are. But you know, just just you know, focus on yourself. You know, focus on yourself, and you know, things will always you know um, you know turn out to be great for you. Um, so that's what I could say for that. So get rich slow. I like that. Uh, what book are you currently reading? Yeah, um, currently I'm I'm reading a book about Argentina because I'm getting ready to go to Argentina. It's uh, <laughs> it's about the Argentinian uh, dirty war, which was like a civil war in in Argentina not too long ago, and it just amazes me all the time how there's these things go on, like you know, in our time in our lifetime that we don't even hear about in our or normal education and so just trying to educate myself a little bit about the politics and the and the uh and the, what what goes on in argentina because i'm going to patagonia uh and i'm looking forward to that good deal at the end of your life how do you want to be remembered you know i really would like uh, actually to be remembered as the the guy that it, I, I don't want to be remembered as a guy that worked hard so I want to be the opposite of that, like the guy that had it figured out. How about like the guy that like, you know, got enough and was like, you know, I'm, uh, I'm going to do what I want to do from this point forward. You know, I'm, uh, you know, he, he figured it out financially. His finances lasted him until he died, right, comfortably, right? He didn't have to hustle and struggle, you know, after a certain time. He never had to worry you know, about finances after a certain time. Cause you know, we, you don't, it's hard to know because, you know, even if you're 50, you're like, well, shit, if I lived 110, that's 60 years. Right. I mean, how much do I need? So, um, you, you know, I want to, I want to be known like as the guy that, that, that figured it out perfectly about halfway through life and uh, made it work. Good, good, good deal. I like it. Okay. Well, last but not least, where can come into Wealth Nation and go to contact you and find out more about you and, um, you know, go abundance um, and, you know, everything that you're doing, you know, your podcast and all that good stuff. Yeah. So my podcast is for real estate agents. 
Um, and, uh, and it's called Real Estate Rock Stars. That's the one that I do personally. Uh, GoBundance has a podcast, but it's really uh, just interviewing our members. So if you want to get to know some of the members before, um, before you join, you could just listen to a couple of member interviews there. Um, and again, I'm going to give you the free book one because that's the best one. It's tribeofmillionaires.com. That's tribeofmillionaires.com. And in my name, Pat Hyben, H-I-B-A-N. Uh, luckily, I'm the only Pat Hyben in the universe. So if you Google me, um, I'm on all the social medias. I don't care what it is. And uh, you can follow me. They're all public. Yeah, I wish I had the same, the, the same uh, I guess, uh, benefit. You know? <laughs> There's like a billion of, of my name. So yeah, I don't have that luxury. But no, hey, Pat, it was, a, it was a pleasure to have you on. I really do appreciate it. You know, you shared a lot of good, valuable information, um, you know, in the book. You know, I definitely want to get that book, you know, so tribeofmillionaires.com, um, you know, seven bucks for shipping. So I'll definitely check that book out. Um, and I'm also interested in, 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 the, in the program, the GoBundance, you know, program. Uh, so I'll be checking that out and listening yeah, to a couple. Uh, yeah, you apply. should join. Apply. Yeah, check it out. Definitely. Okay. Sounds great. And uh, I, I appreciate you. I appreciate your time and, um, and I wish you the best. Thank you, sir. It was a fun podcast. Commit to wealth.com, creating a legacy by committing to real estate wealth.